The Bible says overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. It does not say overcome evil by trying really hard to be good. It says overcome evil with good. And this is the principle of replacement. I like to illustrate this by imagining uh, that you had the goal of trying to get all of the air out of this water bottle. It's a water bottle I use when I play tennis or go for a walk. And if you wanted to get all the air out of this water bottle, what would you do? Well, you could uh, open it up here and there's a uh, place where you can drink at the top and maybe you'd come up with some kind of tube that would fit in there just right and you would seal it off and you'd get a vacuum and so, so on, a very powerful vacuum and maybe you could seal, you could pull most of the air out of there, but I don't think you could pu pull all of the air out of there and it'd be expensive and a lot of trouble and, and uh, there's actually an easier way of, uh, of dealing with it and that is to open up the bigger part of the water bottle here and I've got a glass, of, a pitcher of water over here and if I just take this water bottle and fill it with water, voila, all of the air goes out of the water bottle. And uh, the simplest solution, oops, a little bit of water going on my table there, but uh, at any rate, the simple, simplest solution is always the best. And if you want to get rid of the sin in your life, you want to overcome evil with good. You want to replace evil with good. Let me give you a few examples of this. The Bible teaches that we ought to replace complaining with thanksgiving. The Bible says, and do not grumble as some of them, them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Do you hear what God is saying? You better quit complaining or I just might have to kill you. I feel about people that way, sometimes that way, don't you? You just get tired of hearing them whining and crying. Uh, Warren Wearsby said about the people of Israel that complaining was their besetting sin. It was not adultery or idolatry or murder or theft or lying or stealing. It was complaining. They perennially complained and they murmured and they grumbled and it just made God tired. And uh, he says, do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Now you can try to not grumble by simply trying to not grumble, or you can replace grumbling with thanksgiving, or you can replace grumbling with prayer. You can use that pain in your life to push you to pray. I saw a little video on YouTube the other, the other day that reminded me how ugly, just how ugly complaining is. And let me show you a little uh, section from this video. You can pick up that whole thing now. All I was, Josh, all I was asking you to do was pick up those three parts. All I asked you to do is pick up those three parts. And so you can dress up and clean up, and comb your hair and put on a nice uh, outfit, but it looks really ugly on you. Just like it looked ugly on this kid when he complains. He's probably a real cute kid, but when he complains and he argues, it looks ugly on him. And it looks not only it looks ugly on you, it's bad for you. I ran across a number of web pages that talked about this. Look at this one. How complaining rewires your brain for negativity. This one, complaining is terrible for you according to science. Why complaining may be dangerous to your health. The science of happiness. Why complaining can literally kill you. And this last one, why complaining literally shrinks your brain and what you need to do instead. And complaining is bad for you. It offends God and it's bad for you. And you overcome evil, you overcome complaining with thanksgiving. Several years ago, Charles Duhigg uh, released a best-selling book called The Power of Habit. And he talked about the, in every habit, there's a cue, there's something, a trigger, something that reminds us to do this behavior. And then there's a habit itself, the routine, and then there's a reward of some kind. And so in this case, we have a, a cue, routine, and reward. And the routine is grumbling. And we want to replace that routine with a new routine, and that is replace it with thanksgiving. Ask yourself, is there anything in this situation that I can be grateful for? Is there anything right with the world? Has God done anything to bless me? Is anything good? And you want to overcome evil with good. You want to replace complaining with thanksgiving. Now, this is one of about 15 principles. That big idea that we're dealing with this in, in, in this series is that, God, that you, if you put 
a disciple in the right soil, good things will happen. And that soil consists of about 15 ingredients. Sadly, it's not real simple. And we've talked about the power of habit, that if you will get in the habit, if you will force yourself to be grateful for about six months, gratefulness will become a habit and it will become easy. It will become automatic for you. And we have to, another idea we looked at was train ourselves to, to be godly. That is, break down a complex task into its component parts and work on each one of those parts until that becomes a habit. And another principle we want to look at uh, this week is the principle of replacement, the idea that you want to replace bad behavior with good behavior. Another example of this is we'll replace worry with prayer. Let me show you one of my all-time favorite verses. I memorized it from the old living paraphrase, and I'm going to misquote it, and then I'm going to quote it correctly, all right? Do not worry about anything. Resolve not to worry. Try really hard not to worry. Don't worry. Be happy. You think that's what the verse says? It's actually not what the verse says. Here's what the verse says. Don't worry about anything instead. And I draw your attention to that word right there, instead. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your hearts and your thoughts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. And the key word is instead. Instead of worry. When you're tempted to worry, are you ever tempted to worry? When you're tempted to worry, replace worry with prayer. Use it as an impetus. Use it as a motivation to pray. Here's another good verse. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off. I draw your attention to that word put off. That's the first step, but it's not the only step. To put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. I taught on this this last week in my church. And they actually use a little object lesson that I'm not going to do with you. I actually wore this pair of old painter's pants. I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, it's an old pair of jeans that I use to paint from time to time. And it's all scraggly and so forth. And I, I don't normally, I normally dress up pretty nice at church, but I wore this to church. And a lot of people ask me, why are you wearing those old scruggly pants? And I said, just watch, just watch. And uh, so right at the end of the sermon, I, I, I quoted this verse right here. Take off the old nature and put on the new na- nature. And I said, it's just like this pair of pants. This pair of pants represents the sin in my life. I need to take off this pair of pants. And right there in front of God and my congregation and everybody else, I'm telling you the truth. I took all that pair of pants. Now I had another pair of pants under that pair of gym shorts. And I put on a clean pair of pants to illustrate the principle of replacement. You're going to take off those old pair of pants, but you're not going to leave yourself without any pants. You're going to put on a new pair of pants. And it's a principle of replacement. We see it all through scripture. The Bible says to replace bad sex with good sex. I'm not making this up. Let me read the verse for you. Since sexual immorality is occurring, you need to stop. Stop being sexually immoral. Think that's what it says? It's actually not what it says. Now, it does say in another place, flee sexual immorality. But in this place, in this week, we're emphasizing the principle of replacement. And the verse actually says, since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife. You replace bad sex, that's immoral sex, with good sex, which is sex with your own wife. Uh, (laughs) We replace lies with truth. Uh, The Bible says that each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully. Put off falsehood and replace it with truth-telling. We are to replace a taking attitude with a giving attitude. The Bible says anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. He must take off the taking attitude and put on the working and the giving attitude and the generous attitude. And he replaces the taking attitude with a giving attitude. Several years ago, I got convicted that uh, I needed to take get better care of my, my body. I was about 50 pounds over, uh, overweight and had been so my, uh, pretty much my whole adult life. And I lost 50 p- pounds and have kept 45 of it off. Uh, I actually lost 55 pounds and have, lo- have kept 45 of it off. But uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're on pace to keep, keep it off. And I hope to get five more of it off just by the way. But anyway, you might ask me, how did I do it? How did I lose 50 pounds and keep it off for, for a, a three or four year, years now? And it was a principle of replacement. And that is I replaced Snickers with apples. 
I replaced bad things with good things. Because if you if you take a bowl of Snickers and put it in my kitchen, I'll eat a bowl of I'll eat a Snickers. I might eat a whole bowl of Snickers. But if you take it out and put some apples there, I don't want Snickers Snickers so bad to drive to Walmart. And so I'll eat the apples because they're there through the principle of replacement. And if you can get your belly full, you're not tempted to fill your belly with bad things. And it's a principle of re- replacement. We see it all through Scripture. And teacher, if you want to make disciples of the people that you teach, every time you teach, you want to say, okay, we don't want to do this. What do we want to do? And we want to overcome evil with good.